bring up Jaffe land here. And we don't need to sh share sound, I don't think. So let's get back to the first slide. That's always a good place to start. Lift my left foot, face east. Okay, I think we're there. Uh, can everyone see Dave's slides? Somebody speak up. Yes. Yes. Call it a win then. Okay, excellent. Um, hi, uh, I'm Dave Jaffe. Um, we're at um, Stanford on Stanford campus um, in the Peterson building on the second floor in room 200. And there's three of us here at the watch party. And what I'm going to be talking about today is my um, visit to the uh, Vintage Computer Festival beginning of the month at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, not, not far from here. Um, this is, um, they've had this for multiple years, and I forget how many, how many years they've had this, but it's a, it's a great event uh, where they have both presenters and uh, a very large exhibit space. Uh, I try to get there early to uh, uh, before it's too crowded to uh, take pictures of everything. And uh, um, my presentation today is to show you those pictures. Um, please be advised that I may not remember what I took a picture of or what it is or details about it. So um, I apologize. I pre-apologize for that. So let's let's uh, let's turn on the presenter number one. Okay. Well, here's some of us. Um, here, there's uh, Strick on the left. There's Kevin, and there's there's me on the right. Um, and um, yeah, that was. That was um, at the museum. So the first thing um, is this guy is selling all these computer books and he's got boxes of them and he's been in that same position every year. Um, and uh, he's selling them for uh, one or two dollars each. That's and, the Friends of the Palo Alto Library. Right. And there's actually some fourth stuff there. So um, um, the fourth was represented at the, um, at the festival. Um, some of the Ting stuff, the Homebrew Computer Club newsletter. Uh, this is the PD 11, PDP 11 fourth user's guide, which is now in the possession of, of Kevin. Um, and um, just uh, some other fourth stuff, uh, fourth dimensions, um, for formal proceedings. And, uh, and here's Dwight Elvey, another fourth person who was there. He was managing a uh, room where people were selling, uh, where I think it was just one guy that had uh, reserved a, a whole room to sell his stuff. And these pictures are from that room. Um, he had- uh, Dwight was managing six, the consignment room. Yeah. Where it was a, there were multiple people. Right. Um, Right. Okay. Yeah. There was an, another room where it was just one guy stuff and I just got him confused. Sorry about that. Um, here's a whole box of walkie talkies, which they were giving away for free. And uh, right outside the room, there was a bunch of uh, t-shirts, uh, com older computer t-shirts. If you remember uh, CompuPro and Cromenko, Cromenko was actually, um, in this area in Silicon Valley. Radio Shack, Atari, box of miscellaneous computer computer boards, uh, it's PC boards. Uh, there's some, uh, looks like floppy disk stuff. And these were all on consignment. These tags um, provide a means for people to be paid, uh, Mac, uh, hard disk drives, uh, radio modems, um, DC 300 tapes, remember those? I actually had a, had a 
uh, interface board um, on my uh, on my PC that stored stuff to these kind of tapes, and it was it was very slow. <laughs> um, more books, more books, um, Mac stuff, uh, SciQuest drives, removable drives, uh, PC, old old PCs and monitors. Those were the original um, IBM PCs. Uh, those have um, one floppy and one hard drive in it. So that was good. Uh, Zenith uh, H19 monitor. I had built several of these myself as well as the H89, which um, there'll be a picture of Apple II a bunch more Macs, uh, more, more Mac stuff. This is, uh, this is an H89 computer. Um, and uh, this is a sort of interesting one because it has a hard disk on it. They, they didn't come with a hard disk. Um, the one that I had had one floppy in it, one full-size floppy. And then I bought a a uh, dual floppy that was made by digital equipment that had, was interesting in that it just had one motor and uh, the motor spun um, both drives, floppy disk drives, and the head positioner was the same for each drive. And the interesting thing was to you put in a floppy disk one way in the left-hand drive and you had a flip it around to put it in the second drive. But this um, this was having a, a hard disk on these drives were not, not the case. So this is sort of specialized. What's CHM? Is that like CPM for heat fit? Uh, no, it's the, the slash in there is the issue that you're not, you're- oh, CPM. Yeah, CPM. Is, is, is the, oh. It says so that's CP slash M, not right. CHM. All right, I get it. Yeah. Uh, more H19 um, monitors, and there's a um, uh, keyboard by them as well. Another Heathkit model, ET3 3400, and it has a CPU on it, but I forgot which. CPU this was, uh, HP PCs, uh, Mac PCs. Uh, okay, so now we're out of that room and in, in the, 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 the main exhibit area. And the first thing you come across was this guy showing off uh, single board computers that use relays. So that was uh, pretty neat. I've seen them before. So all these things, and oranges are our relays that we're clicking around. And here's another one that he has, and there's a display on it. And they're all double pole, double throw uh, relays. Okay, and here's another external board with relays on it. And it was controlling uh, uh, the stoplights. So there was actually a running program. Um, uh, older uh, PCs, uh, these were in the era of luggable PCs. So even though it had a CRT screen, uh, you were able to fold the keyboard uh, and just carry the whole thing around. And it might've been like 20 pounds worth of stuff, but that's how you did things back then. Um, this is a uh, old, uh, it's like a, a teletype in the back, and I'm not sure what's in, in, in the front. Okay, here's a uh, sort of a teletype, but not made by teletype, but you know, there's paper tape stuff. Yeah, I, I had my first terminal was a, was a teletype, and my first way of loading programs was through a paper tape reader. So, but I'm glad we're beyond that. But I still have the original paper tape of uh, Microsoft Basic, so 
that may be worth some money someday. There's a couple analog uh, computer simulations. This one simulating a car suspension system. Um, and there's an analog computer and an oscilloscope as the display. Um, here's another one, um, another analog computer and its display. Um, there's one that's not hooked up. And uh, so here's uh, tables of uh, Commodore, Commodore Pet. Remember those? Uh, there was a, he had a bunch of, this guy had a bunch of Commodore stuff. And this was the, the first one, as you can recall, it had a built-in cassette player recorder for saving your programs. And it had these terrible chiclet keyboard uh, that was rapidly, you know, changed to a full-size keyboard later on. But here's one, you know, uh, still running, pretty neat. Okay, this is sort of an interesting display. This is a guy that's doing um, CPU board repairs. And a lot of times these older, older boards, the capacitors go or other components go. And so he has a whole system here where he can um, uh, surgically um, uh, remove components and put uh, new ones on. And he had a whole batch of capacitors and, and other things that he was able to, to deal with. And I think he has a service that, that does this. Okay, here's a guy with uh, Apple PowerBooks. Here's a compact uh, luggable. Uh, early uh, Macintosh portable with a, um, a uh, track ball, uh, a ball as as the as the mouse. Okay, this one. Um, I think it's a, yeah, this is a, an, an old IBM portable with a orange screen. Um, here's a link, a deck link computer system. Um, and uh, they had this, um, as you recall, it had a, a tape interface. And this one apparently has um, um, a, a, an oscilloscope as an output device. Can you back up one? Yep. Over to the right, there is a deck mink, sort of successor to the link. It's a laboratory computer with an LSI 11 in it. Thank you, Kevin. This, is, this I think, was the coolest thing there. So this guy um, basically did uh, this, this core memory module. Um, and uh, here they are. Um, and you can see the wiring through the cores. And behind the cores are um, LEDs or, um, uh, or um, and um, so you're able, so this is the setup that he had with, the, with these uh, cores that he had a, there's a magnetic stick that you can put over the core to change the state of it. And the LEDs visualize each core, um, if it's a one or a zero. Um, and this one has these, uh, you know, Nixie tube kinds of lights behind it. So if you don't like the LEDs, you can get these uh, uh, neon displays behind it. So uh, that, was, that was pretty clever. Uh, IBM PC, um, you know, other, computer stuff. This is a Tektronix computer. It used these DC 300 uh, tape drives to store programs. And the neat thing about these displays is that were, they were, what's the, what's the word for them? They, they were um, image, persistent image uh, things. So you can repeatedly you'd be able to draw things on it pretty easily, a vector at a time, and all the, um, everything that 
you had had drawn, you know, stays there until you erase the whole screen. So that was pretty, pretty neat. This is an H8 computer that um, had not only a front panel uh, input, uh, but also you could connect it to a terminal and it ran, ran uh, Intel processors. Here's, um, these are the uh, PC Junior um, computer on the left. And uh, another, another version on the right. This is a Radio Shack uh, TRS-80 portable. Um, it had an 8085 computer in it. It had a modem in it. It had a four line um, display, I think 20 characters per line. The neat thing about this was that it ran out of off the four AA batteries. It had its own built-in basic uh, program and uh, was very, very portable. So actually, uh, reporters use these to write their stories. You know, when when they're um, um, when they're out reporting and modem it back to their newspaper. I had a similar laptop made by NEC that you know ran the same um, version of BASIC in it, but it had cursor control keys on the left. And I actually adapted a version of fourth to run on it as well. So um, yeah, a bunch of these. Here's some more Commodores and some other miscellaneous computers. Um, and uh, this on the left here is a, a next computer, a next computer. And you might have remembered, you know, some of the advertisement where instead of mounting it like this, they mounted it on a corner. So that was uh, pretty neat to, to see that again. And uh, a Hector computer, I forgot what this is. Uh, I think this was from the UK. I'm not sure what processor was in it. Um, some other computers. This is a a, <laughs> a a board that ran Pong, and so they had that there, and you were able to, to play it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about about this stuff now. It's been a while. There's an early, um, I think. This is, I think. Uh, what it says is Acorn on the back. So it has some a graphical user interface there. Again, I'm sorry that I, I, I couldn't, you know, remember everything and have details about all these computers. Commodore's playing games. This is a um, uh, IBM PS2 computer running Prodigy. So somebody has reimagined that. Um, bunch of um, other computers. Oh yeah, this is uh, Deck Alpha, Motorola 68K, Motorola Power Stacks, a bunch of Motorola computers. This is um, Tandy Radio Shack Color Computer, which was very popular back in the day. MSI uh, S100 computer. Um, I had an Altair, which predates this uh, a little bit, but they all ran the same boards, uh, these S100 boards, which I'll, which I'll show you. Here's the a display of an Apple Newton that was running. This guy, this guy had a, uh, this is a, 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 um, a Otrona uh, computer, two floppy disks, um, like a Z80. CPM operating system. Um, I had one of these at work. These are very uh, nice portable computers. Um, they worked out pretty well. Um, I think they had an orange screen um, on this. So this guy had one and uh, the power supply wasn't working and he was considering using, you know, just using, you know, plugging in, a, uh, getting a switching power supply and plugging that in to make it, to make it work. So. IBM PC. This is an Apple 
one board behind a plexiglass screen. There's a auction company that uh, manages auctioning off, um, you know, rare stuff like this. So they had a couple, couple Apple One boards there. Uh, here's an Apple One board uh, running. And I think this is another one as well. Uh, remember these Apple computers uh, in a plexiglass box? Yeah, that's really neat. Uh, this, here's some um, modems. modems, yeah. Yeah, with acoustic couplers. That was my, my first modem had an acoustic coupler that I made from scratch. Um, right, more of the same. Ah, okay. <laughs> Uh, this is a Radio Shack uh, pocket computer, and I actually have one of these. Um, and it ran basic. It had a one-line uh, display, uh, had a calculator in it. And um, so the neat thing was, I used this as a calculator for a long time because, um, um, you know, you can enter a very long line of, of numbers and then press you know, plus and add them all together rather than in a calculator, you have to and you know, enter the numbers one at a time and then plus at the end. And um, um, so, yeah, so I still have this. And the issue with the one that I have is that the display, LCD display is, um, is not working anymore. It just uh, got, it's just not produce readable letters anymore. So unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, here's a bunch of uh, Apple II computers. I think we're in, a, in um, a, a consignment area. It's a monitor. And on the right, there's an S100 computer. And here's a couple of tables worth of S100 boards, uh, from blank boards to memory boards to all sorts of IO boards. It's good to see those again. Uh, IBM. Uh, PC on the left, another kind of PC on the right with floppy disks. Yeah, here's the boards from the other side of the table. S100 box with uh, floppy disks and, and boards in it. Another H19 terminal, another S100 box, Toshiba laptop, Atari, uh, um, Ink, no, these were dot matrix printer, so, yeah. dot matrix printer, nine pin, uh, some um, calculators, they went and, fast. yeah, uh, abacus, um, yeah, slide roll. Uh, Kevin bought one a few years ago from these guys. Um, evaluation system, and it looks like a 6802. Um, CPU on this one. Um, not, not sure about these computers. There's something, a computer running basic program. And here's the next, uh, another view of the next computer. And I think that's it. So uh, thank you for watching. Would you start sharing it to the